In this lesson, we're gonna be using functions to model linear relationships. The success criteria is I can write linear functions to model relationships. I can interpret linear functions in real life situations. A linear function is a function whose graph is a non-vertical line. A linear function can be written in the form of y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. In this example, we're gonna use the graph to write a linear function that relates y to x. Okay, and when it says relates y to x, we basically just need an equation that has a y and an x in it. Okay, so I just really want to find the equation of this line. Well, if you remember, I can think of a line in the form of y equals mx plus b. M's the slope, b is the y-intercept. Okay, and let's see if we can find those from the graph. Well, the y-intercept is pretty easy to tell in this case because it's the value of y when the line crosses the x-axis. Okay, or AKA when x equals zero. So that's going to be negative three right here. So right here, that's the y-intercept. So we get b equals negative three, okay? And then my slope, well, if you remember, slope is a rise over run. So I can take one point on my line, and whatever that fraction is to get from one point on that line to the other point on that line, that ratio is gonna be my slope. So I can start anywhere, so right here, I'll start here. And then to get from this point to this point, I have to go up three units, so one, two, three, and then right two units, okay? So if I count that out, up three, and then right to, remember my change in y over my change in x, that is my slope. That's gonna be three over two here. So, and that is my m as well. So my m is three over two, my b is negative three, and I can just plug these back in to my slope intercept form equation. So I get y equals three over two x minus three. And now I've successfully written a function that relates y to x, and now we're done. In this example, we're gonna use the table to write a linear function that relates y to x. There's multiple ways you can do this one. Uh, you could plot these points on a graph and then do what we just did in the last example. You could take two ordered pairs here and then use those to find the slope and then the y-intercept, or you can find your change in y and your change in x by looking at the table. Okay, well my change in y I'm gonna see what's happening to y each time. Each time here, I am subtracting two from my y. So I go minus two, minus two, and minus two. So that right there, that change is literally my change in y. So it's negative two. Now I just wanna compare this to my change in x, because if you remember, the slope of a line is just change in y over change in x. Okay, so that's gonna be negative two over. Well, let's see what's happening each time um, I move x. So this goes from negative three to negative two. So I'm adding one, and then plus one, and then plus one. So my change in x is one, positive one, so I can just write one. And this means that my slope, which is the same thing as change in y over change in x, is gonna be m equals, well, negative two over one is just negative two. Okay, so I got my slope. Now I need my y-intercept. Okay, well, my y-intercept in this case is just gonna be three because the y-intercept is the value of y when x equals zero. So I see that x is zero here and the corresponding y value is three. So b equals three. Now I can just plug those into my y equals mx plus b equation. And I'll say this goes here and then this goes here. So I'm gonna get y equals negative two x plus three. Okay, there's multiple ways to do it, like I said earlier, and whatever way you do it will get you this same equation. So anyway, now we're done with this one. For this example, an unmanned aerial vehicle, UAV, is used for surveillance. The table shows the height y in thousands of feet of the UAV x minutes after it begins to descend from cruising altitude. Part A tells us to write and graph a linear function that relates y to x. So. I can use the same method that I used in the last example, but I'm just gonna show you a different way and you can choose whatever way you wanna do this, okay? So I'm gonna pick two ordered pairs here. So I'm gonna do, I'll do a 20 comma 55 and 10 comma 60. All right, and then to figure out the equation of this line, I wanna find the slope. Well, I just can do my change in y over change in x which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I can set that up by doing 60 minus 55 over 10 
minus 20. Okay, well, 60 minus 55 is 5. And then 10 minus 20 is negative 10. Okay, and that simplifies to negative 1 half. So my slope is negative 1 half, and that represents, for each minute, the UAV is reducing its altitude by 1 half of 1,000 feet. Because remember, this is measured in thousands of feet. So for every minute that passes by, we go down half of 1,000 feet. So that's just going to be 500 feet. Okay. Anyway, I got my slope. Now, to find my y-intercept, I'm just going to look at the table again because it's given to us here. The value of x is 0, so that means that the y-value when x is 0 is 65. So this is my y-intercept, so I get b is equal to 65. So I'm going to plug these into my y equals mx plus b equation. So if I just write y equals mx plus b, I'm going to get y equals negative 1 half x plus 65. So that's my equation. Then to graph this, well, I could use the, the equation, but I'm also given a table that already gives me ordered pairs. So I'm just going to graph these ordered pairs. 0, 65. Okay, well, 60 is here and 70 is here. So I'm just going to plot it right in between. I'm actually going to zoom in first. So that's my first point. If I zoom back out, my second ordered pair is 10, 60. So zoom back in. So here's 10, and then go up to 60. And the next point was 20, 55. That's going to be there. And you can see the pattern. I'm going down half of one unit and then right one unit. So down half, right one, down half again, right one. Or I could just start on one of these grid line points and go down one unit, right two, down one, right two. That makes sense because our slope is negative one half. And I'm just going to draw a ray here instead of a line because it doesn't make sense to consider uh, negative minutes in this case. Now, speaking of the ray, this will eventually stop, um, and you won't be able to be below sea level, I guess. You wouldn't be flying anymore. Um, but we'll just have the ray here. Anyway, I've successfully graphed this equation. Now I'm going to move on to part B. Interpret the slope and the y-intercept. All right, well, we've actually kind of interpreted the slope already, but I'll just go over that again. Okay, this negative one-half, right, my change in y over change in x, if you look at it, it's kind of easy to tell on the axis. The y-axis is height in thousands of feet. Well, I'm going down 5,000 feet every 10 minutes, so that means that if I write that down here, so down 5,000 feet over 10 minutes, well, that simplifies to negative 500 feet, and then my units here, this was feet, and this is minutes. So that's going to be negative 500 feet per minute, which means that I am reducing altitude by 500 feet per minute. So that's going to be the interpretation of my slope. Remember, interpret means what does these numbers mean in the context of the problem. Then the y-intercept, well, that's the value of y when x equals 0. So if I look back at my graph, that is going to be this value right here, which is 65. If you look at this, after zero minutes, or so right before I start reducing my altitude, my height is 65. Remember, this is measured in thousands of feet. So the height here is going to be 65,000 feet before I reduce the UAV's altitude. Anyway, we've interpreted the slope and the y-intercept, and we've graphed and written the equation, and now we're done with this one. For this example, the cost y in dollars of buying x cubic yards of mulch from company A, including a one-time shipping fee, is represented by the linear function y equals 29x plus 30. The table shows the cost, including a one-time shipping fee, of buying mulch from company B. Which company charges more per cubic yard of mulch? How much more? Well, let's look at this. Which company charges more per cubic yard of mulch? Okay. Well, what this is asking is dollars per cubic yard of mulch. Okay. Well, if you look at this, my Y is the amount of dollars and X is the amount of cubic yards mulch. Well, I can think of this as my change in Y over my change in X, which is the slope. 
Okay, so all I need to do is find the slope of company A's line and then the slope of company B's line and then compare them. Okay, well, it's pretty easy to find the slope of company A's line. Y equals 29X plus 30. I'm going to rewrite that. Well, slope's just the number that's being multiplied by X when Y is all by itself, and that's going to be 29. So for company A, we know that they're going to charge $29 per cubic yard, okay? I'm actually going to write yards cubed. So yards cubed, that's the same thing as a cubic yard, okay? Now I've got to find the slope for company B and then compare them. So if I scroll back up, here's my table of values, okay? Well, all i got to do is my change in y over change in x. So I'm going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's going to be 82. So my slope is going to equal 82 minus... 48.5 over, and the, my x's are 2 minus 1. So over here, I'm just going to do 82.0 minus 48.5 out. So I'll borrow, get a 5, bring the decimal down, borrow again, get a 3, and a 3. Okay, so m is going to equal 33.5 over 1. Well, that's just 33. So the slope of company B is going to be $33.50 per cubic yard. All right. So the second part says how much more. Okay. All I got to do is just subtract this number and this number to get the difference. So it's going to be 33.5 minus 29. And it's going to give me, whoops. 5, bring the decimal down, and then I get 4. Okay, so in dollars, that's going to be 450. So we know that company A is going to charge 450 less per cubic yard of mulch than company B. Anyway, we've answered all the questions, and now we're done with this one.